The next lesson is 8.4. We're going to be talking about quadrilaterals and interior angles. We're going to talk about classifying quadrilaterals for right now. What you need to know is that as we move down your paper, we are getting more and more specific here. So the cool part is that as you start at the bottom, um, the word that is below, is, the word that's above it is actually going to apply to that same shape too. So we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that in a second here. Quadrilateral is a polygon that has four sides. On a trapezoid, you have one set of parallel sides. That's all that's required. Trapezoid is a special quadrilateral. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. Not all quadrilaterals are trapezoids though. Oftentimes, just like we saw in our angles unit, we'll see these little arrows to kind of show us that the sides are parallel. A lot of times trapezoids won't actually have those. It'll just kind of be an assumption then. Over on this side, this is gonna be a completely kind of different grouping, and this is gonna be the side for parallelograms. And in a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And remember, parallel has like the two little lines in the middle to remind you of them being parallel. So on a parallelogram, we have the top and the bottom are parallel to each other, as well as those two opposite sides that are right there too. Um, a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral. It's a special type. From parallelogram, we have two kind of divergent paths here. We can either become a rhombus if we're a special one, and a rhombus is also going to have the two sets of parallel sides, but also four congruent sides. So in addition to these sides being parallel, they are also all exactly the same length. So what's the difference between this and a square? The problem is with a rhombus, you do not need to have 90 degree angles. So the way that you can think about creating a rhombus is kind of like if you had a square sitting there, and I know that's not a perfect square, and if you were to take this top corner and kind of push it, and you were only to push that top corner, what's gonna happen is the bottom's gonna stay there, but that top is just gonna basically slide over and all those sides are gonna be equal to each other. So that's how you're creating a rhombus there. A rhombus is a parallelogram. A rhombus is also a quadrilateral. We could, in theory, if we really wanted to, generally classify a rhombus as a trapezoid, but it has two sets of parallel sides, so a lot of times we don't do that. If you're a parallelogram, you are a special parallelogram, you're a rectangle, if you have four right angles. So in addition to those four right angles, you also still have the two sets of parallel sides for rectangles, which is kind of cool. Special rectangles um, are going to be called squares. A special rectangle that's a square kind of combines the idea of a rectangle and a rhombus. So you have four right angles and four congruent sides. So all those sides are equal in length. There are also also two sets of parallel lines here because... A square is a type of rectangle, a square is a type of rhombus, and a square is a type of parallelogram, and a square overall is still considered a quadrilateral because it has four sides. Interior angles of a quadrilateral are going to sum to 360 degrees. So we saw with a triangle that we added up to 180, and with a quadrilateral we get to 360. Two examples here for you. This first one is pretty basic. Um, this is the one where I would say you can do 63 plus 107 plus 142. 63 plus 107 plus 142 will get you to 312. So to figure out x, you're going to do 360 minus 312. Again, I always err on the side of writing more down. That way, if I accidentally type something in wrong, I'm good to go. So x is equal to 48 degrees here. This next one, I do have some more complicated expressions, so I'm going to have to write an equation. My first angle is 5x plus 5. My second angle is 2x. I have 5x plus 25, and I also have 3x. Altogether, these angles are going to equal to 360, so I do have an equation to solve here. Combining my like terms, I get 15x. I have 5 plus 25, so that's going to give me 30, which is equal to 360. Subtracting away the 30 on both sides and then dividing through by 15, I end up with 22 degrees here. So x is equal to 22 degrees in this case. I could go back in and say, okay, this is 44 degrees. This is going to be 66 degrees. 5 times 22 is 110, so plus 5, this will be 115. 5 times 22 is 110, plus 25 will give me 135. When I add all those up, I'll get 360 then. 
that is it for quadrilaterals then for today. So that's page 11 and 12 in your notes packet.